In this exercise, we are going to do an ERC721 token. As I mentioned, the ERC721 standard is for non-fungible tokens, which means that these tokens are unique. So let's get started. And now let's create a contract called my ERC721. So how do we do an ERC721 token that is compliant with the standard? And before getting started with the coding section, let's simply analyze the standard that is in the Ethereum Improvement Proposals website. Okay? Now, this standard defines an interface where, as you can see, the specification says every ERC compliant must implement the following interfaces. Okay? And the interface is defined here. Okay? Now, as you can see, there are many similarities with the ERC20 that we were working before. Like, for instance, there is also a transfer event, an approval event, but now we have an extra event. So these events are similar. One thing to notice is that these events contain a token ID. Okay? We are going to see the importance of this token ID in a bit. Okay? The interface also defines a function to get the balance. This function is basically to count all the NFTs assigned to an owner. We also have another function that is very useful to find the owner of an EFT. And there is also a safe transfer front. Okay? This one also contains a token ID. All right? We can read a bit more in the comments. And as you see, this function transfers the ownership of an EFT from one address to another. Okay? We also have a transfer front and a proof similar to the um, ERC20 and then extra functions. For instance, this set approval for all basically is to enable or disable an approval for a third party operator to manage all the assets that we have. Okay? Get approved and then a function to query if an address is authorized operator for another address. Okay? Then the token standard also defines some wallet interface. Okay? What it's saying is that a wallet must implement the wallet interface if it will accept transfer. Okay? So basically, if we want to create a contract or a wallet and we want to accept ERC721 transfers, we need to implement this interface. Okay? The standard also defines a set of extensions, okay? In this case, the metadata extension is optional. However, it is very important to see the functions that this ERC721 metadata interface defines. And these functions can be very useful, for instance, to get the name of a collection of NFTs, okay? Also, a symbol or 
abbreviated name for the NFTs in this contract. Okay? And and a token URI, okay? Which is a uniform resource identifier for a given asset. Okay? Um we are going to see for instance that this URI might point to a JSON file and this JSON file will need to conform the metadata JSON scheme of the ERC721. One example of a ERC721 metadata JSON schema is this one, where basically notice we have a title and then we have some properties, okay? We have a name, a description, and an image, okay? Now, you might have noticed that websites like OpenSea basically allow you to explore NFTs, and these NFTs have an image, okay? So the way it works is that we can create a JSON that describes all the metadata of our particular token and what is exactly representing. Then we can store these, for instance, in IPFS or simply in a server. And then the NFT, what it's gonna do is it's only gonna store the URI where the file with all the metadata is gonna live. 